Hello and welcome to another Lightroom color grading tutorial. For this video I'm going to create some artificial aurora like color tones. That means I will change the color palette of this image from mostly green to mostly blue and aqua with a little bit of green sprinkled in and overall just apply a very muted style on this photo. So let's go. This is our base image. It's very bright, very green and very saturated. So I pretty much want to apply the opposite look. First off, however, I'm going to change the profile to Adobe Landscape. And right away, let's get rid of those green tones by dropping the white balance temperature. All right, now we have more of a blue color cast. Let's also adjust the tint a bit. Okay, for the next step, I do want to work on the exposure of the image. And that means I just want to get the highlights and the shadows right and giving the image the dark tone I'm aiming for. So first off, let's drop the exposure. I'm making sure to not underexpose anything by looking at the histogram, but wow, this looks pretty good. Then let's also bring down the highlights all the way. And at this point, I'm also dropping the contrast. This will help tremendously with the muted tones I'm aiming for, just like that. Now at this point, we do lose a bit too much brightness. I'm going to change that by increasing the whites. And thus we also get a little bit of contrast back, but that's okay. Just like that. We now do have a little bit of overexposure in this reflection in those water droplets. I personally don't think that's a problem. So let's keep on going. Next up, I want to reduce the contrast some more again. But I'm going to do this by increasing the blacks. Alright. Then let's give those water droplets some more sharpness by increasing the texture. And the clarity. Perfect. So after those changes, we can see the image did get a little bit too saturated again. So I'm going to drop the vibrance to change that. I'm going to drop it quite a bit. Let's go with something like this. Now at this point, it's almost black and white, but don't worry, we are going to change that later. For now, let's do some local adjustments. As always, I'm starting with the gradiated filters. All of them are kind of surrounding this grass in the center. So here again, I want to shape the light, which means I'm going to make it dark on the outside and brighter in the center of the picture. So let's start by bringing down the exposure. And I'm also bringing down the whites. This will also darken this part, but doesn't underexpose anything. So that's really helpful. And with the next gradiated filter, I'm going to drop the texture and the clarity, which will make this area much, much smoother. And I'm also going to drop the temperature to add a slightly blue color cast. Just like that. Perfect. Then there's this gradiated filter left. Again, I'm going to drop the exposure. And that's it for the gradiated filters. Then, of course, I also have applied a few radial filters. Here, let's start from the bottom. With this one, I want to brighten up the center of the picture. So let's first slightly increase the exposure. Also, I'm going to further boost the texture and the clarity just to make this grass and the water droplets pop a little more. All right, then let's go further up the image. This one is again used to brighten up the area and also add some sharpness. So let's boost the whites and the texture. Oh. Okay, nice. For the next radial filter, this one is actually inverted. So that means everything outside of this filter will be changed. And I'm going to use this radial filter to apply some kind of vignetting effect on this image. So let's first drop the exposure. 
And by doing this, I'm going to change this image quite dramatically. As you can see, I want to continue making the outside here a little smoother by bringing down the texture. And let's also drop the clarity. All right, awesome. Then. There are two radial filters outside of this image, which means you can see them right now. So let's zoom out. I want to start with the bigger one right here. And I'm going to use the upper radial filters to add some kind of light effect coming in from the upper right corner, which works really cool on those kind of macro shots, I guess. And for this reason, I am going to push the blacks and I'm also going to apply a negative dehaze to create this light effect. Now here you can see this glowing part already. I don't think the colors are fitting for the rest of the image. So I'm just playing around with the temperature. In this case, I'm going to increase it all the way up and at the same time, I'm going to drop the tint all the way down. We could even increase the clarity, I guess, to make this light effect a little cooler. Perfect. Then let's switch over to the last radial filter. And with this one, I want to give this light effect up there a little more spice. So let's first push the exposure. And we can go really crazy here. Something like this, maybe. And again, I like to play around with the dehaze. Decreasing it will make this light effect stronger. Increasing it will make it a little less visible. So that's up to you. I guess I want to have it somewhere in this range. And at this point, if you're not satisfied with the colors, the hue slider is a really cool tool for this effect. So let's see what fits here. Of course, I don't want to have those warm tones. As I said, I want to have some kind of artificial Aurora color tones. So more in the blue and the green color range. Just like that maybe. Let's leave it at that point. We can always change it later anyway. So that's it for the local adjustments. Now let's continue in the tone curve. For this image, I'm going to apply a point in the very center of the curve. I just want to work on the darkest tones. That means I'm going to create a point somewhere in this range and I'm dragging it down to make those parts a little darker. Just like that. At the same time, I want to grab the black point all the way down in the left corner and slightly raise it. This again helps with the softer look of everything. And that's it for the tone curve. Now let's take a closer look at the HSL panel. First off, I want to work on the hue and I want to change those green tones a little more. Therefore, let's bring up the green hue. And thus we get some more blue color tones going on here. Let's do the same with aqua tones. Just like that. Again, this starts to get a little too saturated. So I'm going into the saturation tab and change that by bringing down the green saturation. And let's maybe also bring down the blue saturation. Just like that. Awesome. Now let's take a look at the color grading panel. Here we can really change the color palette. I'm going to start with the shadows. And of course I want to have a cold color tone in here. So let's go somewhere in this range. Maybe let's adjust it a bit. And bring down the saturation. That looks really, really good. Let's head over to the midtones. Again, a colder color tone does fit quite nicely here. But I'm aiming more towards the aqua color range. And I'm also going to use a lower saturation here. Perfect. Now for the highlights, we do want to have some color variety here. So I'm going to apply a greener color tone to the highlights. And now you can pretty clearly see what I mean by Aurora color tones. Then one last thing for the color grading of this image. All the way down in the calibration tab, I just want to drop the blue primary hue a bit. And here we have the final colors. 
of course for this image some vignetting also works really good so let's apply that perfect and finally i want to sharpen this image i'm using the masking to make sure the sharpening is only on the grass and water droplets and let's push the sharpening quite a bit we could also add some noise reduction in this case but that looks really really awesome so that's the final image i hope this was helpful and interesting as always if you have questions left feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video